after Olivia <coughs> Wilde, uh, we have Elon Musk and Elon Musk buying Twitter. Yes, that's been a big deal. He's been leaking Twitter files left and right. Yeah, yeah, I think I think Which it was is, really it was really great. It was um, yeah. for this year. It was just it really showed people if people who that, like to listen. that gave me hope. Yes, that gave me hope with Elon Musk getting Twitter and seeing how transparent he wanted people to be on what was actually going on on that platform, because we heard from multiple prime ministers, New Zealand's prime minister, France's prime minister, that they were looking to weaponize Twitter to. Um, flag disinformation. A month ago, there's an agreement between New Zealand and the US and Twitter uh, because, uh, uh, well, Twitter decided to really exchange some data about the algorithm. I'd like to really praise them for this because this is an important step forward. And what we would like to do really is to decide that, well, and to acknowledge formally that if you don't know anything about the way algorithms are designed, you can't be sure that uh, algorithm won't really uh, amplify um, the uh, violent content. So we really want to have an algorithm partnership. We want to share information so it has to be as efficient as possible with all the stakeholders. But we should also moderate the platforms because for the time being, platforms don't moderate the content sufficiently. Uh, specifically on the algorithm uh, research uh, uh, initiative, uh, this is where we have an initial partnership with Microsoft, Twitter, New Zealand, and the United States and Open Mind. And what we're working on here is infrastructure that allows us to create privacy and protection around proprietary issues, but then allows us to still uh, have independent researchers access data that helps them understand the use of algorithms. And once we're able to build that platform, that could be used across multiple platforms. So it's not unique to just, for instance, uh, uh, Twitter or, or one singular platform. It should be infrastructure that we can use more widely. A tiny country, but this week she took it to a new level with a speech to the UN about communication and what she describes as disinformation. It will also be important in understanding more about mis- and disinformation online, a challenge that we must, as leaders, address. Sadly, I think it's easy to dismiss this problem as one in the margins. I can certainly understand the desire to leave it to someone else. As leaders, we're rightly concerned that even the most light-touch approaches to disinformation could be misinterpreted as being hostile to the values of free speech that we value so highly. Now, this is indeed an interesting topic, but there are some big problems with what Jacinda is proposing. She glosses over how any restrictions on speech and communication would impact our ability to discuss issues freely. And who exactly is deciding what is true and what is false? Politicians? Do you trust politicians to make that call? Do you trust anyone to make that call? The sort of authoritarian-minded people who tend to desire that level of control over speech are the very last people you would want making the decisions. And we know this because of the inflammatory language Ardern uses to sell her idea to the world. How do you ensure the human rights of others are upheld when they are subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology? The weapons may be different, but the goals of those who perpetuate them is often the same, to cause chaos and reduce the ability of others to defend themselves, to disband communities, to collapse the collective strength of countries who work together. But we have an opportunity here to ensure that these particular weapons of war do not... And censor people uh, against uh, hate speech and... Uh, uh, and and out sh shouts to Mr. What, Dirty Sesh? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and he, uh, he covered some topics. He covered some topics. Yeah. Um, if you if you've ever gone on Instagram, he's he's covering topics on political views. He's a New yeah. Zealand rapper who's now transitioned. He's onto YouTube, and a lot of the rappers in New Zealand, I shout out to them, because a lot of them genuinely care about how Parliament, how the government's being run here, and they speak out for the people, power to the people. Yes, yo yo, yeah. but yeah, for me um, on on the Twitter, I found that it was really it was really good just seeing yeah. uh, him buy Twitter and. Yeah. For a lot of people, I think it's it really showed that um, if if anyone was concentrating or listening, that he was able to kind of, as the Twitter files were coming out, there was someone at least there's someone out there that is willing to 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 show that they have morals. And 
yeah. that year was it was really good for me because <clears throat> you have this um, the richest man in the world yeah, this year, and subject, he's yeah. he's just kind of like well this is how it should be these are the things that are actually happening and for young people or people wanting to go into business or whatever it is being transparent with the the people who look up to people or who are using the the, the products that you're trying to sell yeah. and it's and at the same time it's funny how mainstream media is trying to like tarnish him and say he's evil and he's this even though all he did was yeah he literally just said look at these people doing bad things and i think what people should take from this year is he leaked things honest things that they're, they're, they're that were literally yeah that were taking place that were taking place it's it's a legal thing on on the computers it's not like he wrote them up himself but yet people a lot of people will try so hard to be like no nah, he's evil He's evil well, until... Well, well. So one day before President Trump took office, Dr. Fauci gave a speech warning all of us that Trump would have to deal with a cataclysmic pandemic. He, this was the day before Trump was sworn into office. He was warning us that the greatest crime in world history was about to happen. We should have been paying attention, but we weren't. Watch. There is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. Surprise. Surprise. There will be a surprise he's outbreak. Not like, he's not like saying some data shows that this is possible. Some data concludes that we may see this. It, it seems highly likely. No, he says will. Here he is answering, like, what does Elon Musk have on you on CBS? Watch. I don't have a clue of what he's talking about. Go to Fauci's Wikipedia. And you see, go to his wife, to the right, who he's married to. Okay, zoom in a little bit so we can see it. Christy Grady, right? Okay, so who is Christy Grady? Go to Christine Grady. Watch this. Hmm. Zoom in. Christine Grady is an American in bioethics who serves as the head of the Department of Bioethics at the National Institute of Health Clinical Center. NIH. NIH. Wow. That's so crazy. her job is to hold him accountable. What? D did you? Did you? Did you just? Okay, so the basically the 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 HR of your job is, is your, your wife. wife. <laughs> there's no there's no conflict of interest there. No way. Are you are you kidding me? Can you like that's not real? That's that can't be real. No, no, that is that, that is, real. That, that is real. Our media is controlled by the elite to tell you what to think, when to think it, and how to think it. Don't believe me? Watch this. Cautious while looking for health information in the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information in the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information in the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information in the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information on the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information on the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information in the Twitterverse. Be extra cautious while looking for health information on Twitter. Be extra cautious while looking at health information on Twitter. Be extra cautious while looking for health information on Twitter. Be extra cautious while looking for health information on Twitter. Be extra cautious while you're looking for health information on Twitter. Be extra cautious while looking for health information on Twitter. Be extra cautious trusting any information from the media because these puppets are paid to lie to you. They read a script given to them by their masters and it's all built to spin a narrative that controls you and takes more of your money. Stop trusting people who hate you. Fox's Hillary Vaughn asked lawmakers about lying at Twitter. They didn't seem too concerned. Watch. About the Twitter files that have come out, if it turns out that the FBI did mislead Twitter executives to think that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation, do you think that those people should be held accountable? So far, it's been um, uh, much ado about nothing. Do you think that's concerning when you see political parties and campaigns trying to censor information on a media platform? Um, again, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Anything that undermines democracy, uh, f uh, threatens the security of the American people, uh, should be reviewed. The Twitter files, and if you have any concerns that they were able to suppress the Hunter Biden laptop story just a few days before an election. It's 
unbelievable. We see this as a, a an interesting or a coincidence, if I may, that uh, uh, that he would so haphazardly, uh, Twitter would so haphazardly push this distraction. Uh, that is a that is a full of uh, old news, if you think about it. Um, and uh, at the same time, Twitter is facing very real and very serious questions uh, about the rising volume of anger, hate, and anti-Semitism on their platform, and uh, how they're letting it happen. This is we we see this as an interesting, uh, you know, cons, uh, you know, coincidence, uh, and uh, we, and you know, it's a distraction. So first, just one percent of Twitter users absorbed about seventy percent of the so-called Russian disinformation, meaning that's a tiny fraction of overall users who encountered actual Russian trolls. These users were overwhelmingly partisan Republicans. There is no reason to think that masses of gullible swing voters who might have voted for Clinton were hoodwinked by Russia and then voted for Trump instead. I am so offended. I don't use that word lightly, but I'm so offended by Adam Schiff's, Schiff's complete disregard for the Constitution. There's a free press in our country, and it's not just a free press when you agree with the free press. It's not just a free press for the left or the right. The fact that he had the temerity to ask a private body to engage in what is censorship, there's no other way of putting it, censoring the free press is abhorrent. And you can't have a society that is based around free speech and free press that functions when you have government agents like this. And I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Section 230 immunity should be on the line when you have a member of Congress, a government body, when the government is in Democrat hands predominantly doing this. This is the, the, That's the whole thing is that uh, just maybe three months ago, less than three months ago, he was out. Uh, less than three months ago, he was out and he was giving uh, satellites, uh, Starlink satellites out in the Ukraine to help Ukraine in their war effort. He was providing these satellites. Now, in the moment he, he was celebrated, it was like, oh my God, you're a hero. Thank you, Elon Musk, for giving out these satellites. The moment he buys Twitter, oh my God, you're a villain. How dare we don't want a billionaire owning too Twitch. much. I'm like, how many billionaires already own too oh, much? Yeah. Is anyone out talking about how much Bill Gates is buying up farms? Uh, do, you see, do you see any celebrities being pissed off of what Bill Gates is up to and questioning his motives of him owning fact checkers or anything that he owns? No, you don't hear a fucking word about it. But the guy that owns Tesla, you want to complain about it. So Alyssa Milano, she's a celebrity that came out and pretty much embarrassed <coughs> herself. She got ratio pretty bad on Twitter for saying that, oh, I'm, uh, and uh, she's like, oh, I don't like Elon Musk now that he's bought, he's bought Twitter. We don't need billionaires owning things. I'm gonna return my Tesla. And, and now I just bought myself a Volkswagen. I don't wanna support huh. anyone who, who, who's, who's a, a campaigner for white supremacy. And then people are like, Alyssa, you, you, you do know Volkswagen was built by the Nazi party. You know, the company was started by Nazis. And she just was, just didn't have a proper response for it. And then and then all her former, her old leaks got, her old tweets got leaked of her pretty much saying how much she loved Elon Musk. <laughs> and it was asking if you had a chance to have a celebrity dinner with someone, who would it be? And it was, she was like, she named like three people and then the, um, one of the three was Elon Musk. You know, so it's just like people were praising this guy left and right, but now that he owned a platform that the government was looking to weaponize. They sent all the celebrities out as messengers to campaign anger and turn on him yeah. and to try to paint the narrative, he's a bad person. And it shows you how much control old media used to have. Old media used to be able to control the narrative. They're pissed off at YouTubers, which is new media, because we can see the notes and compare, like, wait a minute, a few months ago, you guys were praising him. Now. He's a bad guy? Just like, what, you know, like, no, like, we don't believe you. You, you need more evidence. And it's, no, it's just like, no, we can see that based on the information you guys publicly shared about Twitter and its involvement to some degree with Western governments and only people that watch UN type things would hear about it. Local news people wouldn't hear about it. And your national news in America, you wouldn't hear about it. But anything with the World Economic Forum or the UN Security Council, they've been talking about them weaponizing Twitter for a long time and wanting to use that across the board on other social media platforms. So it's a shame. It's a shame that um, what, what they tried to do with Elon. But Elon, thank you 
for being transparent, sharing those Twitter files with us, showing the collusion between government. They, they said um, it, they, it, you know, it had been heavily infiltrated by former FBI yeah. uh, employees and CIA employees that would quit uh, DOD, which is Department of Defense in the U.S., which is like national security uh, defense companies. They would work for DOD, which is branches of the government, Department of Defense, and they would transition over to Twitter and work behind the scenes. And they said it's worse in uh, Facebook at the moment. They said Facebook has way more at former FBI and CIA employees that are on their books, and they were purposely shutting down multiple profiles for, on Twitter, shutting down multiple profiles on Facebook and Instagram. A lot of people had their uh, Instagram accounts closed over the year. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I know quite a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, citing disinformation and misinformation that ended up becoming coming out as true. You know, so this is the, uh, the length of that they're going to to try to control populations. And, uh, yeah, guys, so just stay privy, stay aware. Keep doing your, your research or whatever outside, I would say, traditional media because yeah. you can see that they're not genuine. They're not genuine. They can't be trusted. It was already uh, uh, truth enough that most people don't trust their government. But now, you know, it needs to be very clear. You can't rely on cutting on the 6 o'clock news and finding them to be trustworthy. Or your parents cutting it on while they're watching Dancing with the Stars <laughs> and flicking between channels that they're going to get reliable information. So whatever the narrative is, question it. Always question everything. You know, yeah. never believe the message that's being put out there because you need to find out who's going to benefit from that type of control. Hey guys, if you want to watch more clips, click here. And if you want to watch the full podcast, click right here.